Today we're looking at a pretty crazy equation. So what is that equation? Well, we're gonna find all real numbers x such that three to the x plus seven to the power log base four of three minus four to the x minus seven to the power log base three of four equals four to the x minus three to the x minus 14. So obviously there's a lot going on here. And in fact, if you were to write down a similar equation kind of at random, it probably would be impossible to solve by hand. But that being said, this one is carefully constructed so that if we find a trick, we can find a solution. Okay, so let's start by introducing some notation. So let's let lowercase a be equal to the log base four of three. And I'd like to observe by the change of base formula, I can write that as the natural log of three over the natural log of four. I could really write it as the log base anything of three over the log base the same thing of four, but I'm gonna use the natural log here. Now I'd like to observe that both three and four are bigger than the number e, meaning the natural log of three is positive and the natural log of four is also positive. So that makes this thing a positive number. Now let's also observe that one over a is equal to the natural log of four over the natural log of three just by taking the reciprocal, which is equal to the log base three of four. So in fact, these exponents here are reciprocals of each other. Let's introduce some other notation as well. So let's set capital A equal to three to the X plus seven. So that's this first term. And we'll set capital B equal to four to the X minus seven. So that's gonna be the second term. And now let's see what our equation becomes. So here we're gonna have a to the power lowercase a, so that's kind of pretty clearly this first term, and then minus b to the power one over a, that's this second term, equals, well, let's notice that this uh, right-hand side of the equation is in fact simply capital B minus capital A. Okay, so now I think everything is kind of shaping up. Next up, what I'd like to do is put all the capital A's on one side of the equation and the capital B's on the other side of the equation. So let's observe that we have capital A to the A minus capital A is equal to B plus capital B to the one over A. Now I'm gonna do a bit of a trick here and that's the following. I'm gonna take this capital B and I'm gonna rewrite it as capital B to the power one over A, all to the power A. Okay, so now why might I do that? Well, it's to use a little bit of a trick involving a function. So let's set little f of x, so that's a function, equal to x to the A, plus x. Okay, and now let's notice the following kind of obvious observation, and that is that f of x is an increasing function. Okay, so it's an increasing function, but what does that mean? Well, that means that f of x is injective. In other words, it's one-to-one. -one. So it's pretty easy to show that any continuous increasing function will be one-to-one. -one. And here I mean strictly increasing. Well, I guess we should point out that it's gonna be increasing for positive or non-negative values of X, but we're gonna eventually evaluate this at capital A and capital B, and those are non-negative values of X. Okay, so anyway, we've got little f of X is increasing, which means it's injective. Also, let's observe that the equation that we've built right here is equivalent to little f of capital A equals little f of b to the one over a. But the fact that this is injective or one to one, that means that a is equal to b to the one over a. 
but now we can rewrite that in terms of what we have over here. So that means that we have, well, let's see, capital A is three to the X plus seven equals capital B is equal to four to the X minus seven. And then that's going to be to the power one over A, which is the natural log of four over the natural log of three. But now we can raise both sides of this equation to the power natural log of three, and we'll see that we've got this equation three to the x plus seven to the power natural log of three is equal to four to the x minus seven to the power natural log of four. Okay, nice. So what we've done so far is we've taken our equation over here in this magenta box and we've turned it into something which is hopefully a little bit easier to solve. Okay, so now let's get to solving this. Thanks for sticking around this long into the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing, it really helps us out. Okay, so, so far we've taken this magenta equation and we've turned it into this equation after our blue arrow, which is hopefully a little simpler. And now what we'll do is get these natural logs out of the exponent by applying logarithm rules. So let's take a logarithm of both sides of this equation. So that's going to give us the natural log of three times the natural log of three to the x plus seven equals log four times the log of four to the x minus seven. Again, we just use log rules there that bring the exponent into a multiplier. But now I'm going to introduce a new function and I'll call that function lowercase g. So let's set g of x equal to the natural log of three times the natural log of three to the x plus seven minus the natural log of four times the natural log of four to the x minus seven. And let's note the following. Any solution um, x, which is bigger than, and we'll talk about why this is important, the natural log of seven divided by the natural log of four is a root of g of x equals zero. And I guess I could just say a root of the function g of x, and that means a solution to g of x equals zero, but let's just be really thorough here and put g of x equals zero. Okay. So now why does x need to be bigger than the natural log of seven over the natural log of four? Well, that's the domain of our function g of x. Now we're gonna use something about some limits of our function g. So let's observe that if we take the limit as x approaches the log base four of seven from the right, so I'd like to observe that this natural log of seven over the natural log of four is simply the log base four of seven using the change of base formula. Okay, so the limit as x approaches that number from the right of g of x is equal to infinity. Well, it's well known as the argument of the natural log approaches zero, which is what's occurring right here from the correct direction the output of the natural log approaches minus infinity. But since we're subtracting that off here, that means our whole function is gonna approach positive infinity. And this part over here is simply a finite number as that's occurring, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so that's what our function g of x is looking like towards that number right there. So I guess we could start to sketch this out if we wanted to. Okay, so let's say that's our axis. And let's say this vertical asymptote here is our log base four of seven. So our function has a vertical asymptote right there. So I'm just gonna draw it like this. And well, any solution will be where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm just gonna draw this point right here is our solution. And I've drawn this as if it's like a strictly decreasing one-to-one -one function, which will prove that it is, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, 
So now let's also look at the derivative. So we'll have to use you know, some of our derivative rules here. So in fact, we'll use the derivative of a natural log and the derivative of an arbitrary exponential function. So for this part right here, we're gonna have the natural log of three squared times three to the x over three to the x plus seven. And here we're using the fact that the derivative of the natural log sends us downstairs and then the derivative of an exponential function will be the natural log of the base times the original exponential function. So that's what we've got here. Okay, and then we're gonna have minus the natural log of four squared times four to the x all over four to the x minus seven. So now I'm gonna rewrite that a little bit. I'm gonna rewrite that as the natural log of three squared over one plus seven times three to the minus x. That's just from multiplying the numerator and the denominator by three to the minus x. And then here we're gonna have minus the natural log of four squared over one minus seven times four to the minus x. So kind of similarly. Now I'd like to observe the following. And that is this portion of the function right here that I've got in this yellow box is pretty clearly an increasing function. So let's talk our way through that. So as x is getting larger and larger and larger, let's observe that this numerator is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's because this part right here is getting smaller. But if the numerator is getting smaller, the whole thing is getting larger. Whereas this term right here in our green box is a decreasing function. And that's for kind of the dual reason here. As x is getting larger and larger and larger, and that should be a minus x there, the numerator is getting bigger. But if the numerator is getting bigger, the whole thing is getting smaller. Okay, but if we've got an increasing function minus a decreasing function, that means the whole thing is an increasing function. So that means our derivative is an increasing function. Let's also observe that the limit as x approaches log base four of seven from the right of the derivative is in fact equal to minus infinity. So you can just check that this bit right here is well behaved as we approach this number. And then this bit right here is approaching infinity, but it's attached to this minus sign. So the whole thing is going to minus infinity. Okay, so let's also observe that the limit as x approaches positive infinity as of g prime is equal to what? Well, it's gonna be the natural log of three squared minus the natural log of four squared, which is negative. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Our derivative is increasing, but our derivative kind of quote unquote starts out at minus infinity and ends at a negative number. But that means that the derivative always has to be negative. It never becomes positive given that its end behavior is negative and it starts out as negative. So just to kind of summarize all of this right here, this tells us that g prime of x is always negative. But then if g prime of x is always negative, that means that g of x is decreasing. But then if g of x is decreasing, it's a one-to-one -one function, just like we argued with our f of x. So that means that g of x really does have this picture over here. It's got this asymptote over here uh, to the left, and then it's decreasing, which gives us this unique root right here at a number that we need to find. So anyway, what we're getting out of this is if we can find a solution, it's the only solution given that we've just argued that our function is one-to-one. -one. Okay. So that being said, let's see what we can do to find a solution to our equation. 
So before we finish everything off, I'd like to tell you guys about my second channel, Math Major, which has full courses in mostly upper division math classes. And in fact, they're ad free thanks to my support on Patreon and YouTube memberships. So if you'd like to help me keep those ad free, maybe think about becoming a patron or joining our YouTube membership. But of course, there's no pressure. Okay, so we got down to this equation right here having a unique solution so far. And now we're going to do a bit of guess and checking in order to find our solution. So I'd like to observe here that we've got the natural log of three. Three is of course the second prime number. And here we've got the natural log of four and four is two squared, which is the first prime number. So I guess it would be nice if this number right here were a power of two. So in other words, if this were two to some power, and then if this number over here, this four to the X minus seven were a power of three. So let's see, that would mean this equation that we've built would be the natural log of three to some number times the natural log of two to some number equals, well, the same kind of thing on the other side of the equation. So let's see if we can make that happen. So what would we need? We'd need three to the X plus seven to be equal to two to some number and we need four to the X minus seven to be equal to three to some number. So let's just, you know, play with some small values of X to make this work. So let's see, three to the one plus seven is 10. That's obviously not a power of two, but three squared is nine plus seven is 16, which is two to the four. So let's note that here, that three squared plus seven is 16, which is two to the four. And that would hint towards X being equal to two. So let's just hang on to that. And then what if we plug X equal to two in here? Well, we're gonna get four squared minus seven, which is 16 minus seven, which is nine, which is three squared, which also seems to work. So that tells us that perhaps we've got a good guess for a solution and that guess would be X equals two. So let's see if that works. So we're gonna have the natural log of three times the natural log of three squared plus seven is the same thing as the natural log of three times uh, the natural log of 16, but let's notice that 16 is the same thing as four squared. But now we can take that natural log of four squared and rewrite it as the natural log of four times the natural log of nine. That's because we can take that two out front, it becomes a multiplier, then we can bring it into the natural log of three and make it the natural log of three squared. But then we can rewrite the natural log of nine as the natural log of, let's see, four to the X or four squared minus seven. So now reading this from the extreme left to the extreme right hand side verifies that X equals two is in fact a solution to this equation right up here. But very early on in the video, we proved that this equation right here was equivalent to our original goal equation. So that means we've got a solution and our solution, which is a unique solution, is the number x equals two. And that's a good place to stop.